What's up, Spartans? I hope everyone is doing well. Um, I hope you guys are, are trying to make the most of this time that we have um, and just being away from campus and, and you guys having to um, take education onto an online platform. So I hope you guys are, you know, trying to enjoy it um, and, and getting the most of it out of it as you can. Um, it's a little, it's weird, honestly. It's weird um, being here um, about to do a character development talk when, you know, I'm so used to, you know, doing these talks and, and you guys are sitting, you know, two feet away from me, you know, as we're about to do these talks, right? So um, I think it's important, though, that we continue and try to stay on track with these things and try to provide you guys with just content and just try to be able to help navigate you um, through this difficult time right now. Um, so I know, I know it's been a while since the last time we've actually done um, a nutrition talk. The last one that we did was actually on hydration, real simple talk. Um, and today, it, it's kind of the same, same format. It's a simple talk, but it's really um, geared toward to, to help you um, in terms of nutrition and help, and help you in terms of navigating that um, in this weird space right now. When we don't have school, when most of us aren't as active as we are used to being, you know, in a typical school day setting. Um, so um, I really just want to kind of help navigate you and help you think about some ways um, to either enhance your nutrition or, you know, either bring it up from the dust um, because you've been in the house in front of a computer all day long and, you know, you just, you know, it's fell to the wayside. So that's the hope of this talk is, is to really just maybe open your eyes a little bit. Um, so I have a, a PowerPoint that I'll go through. I'm actually going to share the screen with you in a little bit. But just wanted to welcome everybody um, and just and, and get you and get you guys on the on page of, of what we're going to go through right now. OK, so let me share my screen with you um, and then we'll get the work. We'll get the. Um, talk going character development. OK. Nutrition style. OK, so let me go ahead, pull it up, set it up as a presentation. Now we're rolling, right. All right. So from the jump where we're talking about nutrition. OK. Um, and as we get into it, there's, there's just a couple of takes um, that I want to really focus on, right? So here's what basically the things we'll talk about, really just educating you um, on your caloric intake, what that looks like now, um, eating schedule, and kind of talk about, you know, good eating schedules um, and, and where you fall amongst that. I've got a couple of examples for you. Um, some key nutrients that you need to have in your diet um, whenever you're eating, like all portions of your meal, um, should have these key ingredients or these key nutrients embedded in your meal, right? And then lastly, I'll just kind of briefly touch on just portion sizes, especially right now in a time, like I said earlier, where things are just weird and we're not in the same space that we're normally in. We're not here in the NAIC training. We're not, we don't have after school practice and things like that. So really just paying attention to some of this stuff because it's going to change. It's going to look different um, based off of, um, you know, where we used to be when we were actually in school, when we were actually in session. Okay, so the first thing, I think it's important, like right now that, that you are able to calculate how many calories you need on a daily basis, right? So really just starting, okay, looking at your resting caloric expenditure, right? And basically that just means what is it that you need to just survive, okay? What is it that you need to just wake up, and, and not have to do anything but just to wake up and be here, right? Not even here, but at home, okay? So, so there's a couple ways we do that, right? So it's a little bit different between guys and girls, and I'll talk a little bit about that, right? So first and foremost, really, we just want to start with your body weight. And for males, okay, let's take our body weight, um, and then we want to multiply that by 11, right? And what that 11 stands for, that's just calories per pound, okay? So I use my body weight as an example, okay? Uh, so I'm 190, so you take that, multiply it by 11, that gives you 2,090 calories. That's, a, that's, a, that's what I need um, to just be me, right? To just wake up, breathe, to sustain, okay? To be alive. That, that's basically what I need, okay? Now, females, yours is a little bit different, right? Uh, your multiplier is different. So instead of you multiplying by 11, you're going to multiply by 10, Okay. So just using my weight again um, on the female side of things, just taking 190, right? Multiply it by 10, um, it gets you 1,900 calories, right? So boom, we figured that out. We kind of know what our resting caloric expenditure is, okay? That's a perfect start. All right, now from there, we want to figure out um, our daily activity caloric expenditure, right? 
And, and, and in this, this is kind of a, a percentage of your activity level, like how active are you, right? So this is gonna be different right now. Like I mentioned earlier, this is gonna be different, okay? If we were in school, like a normal, you know, training week, a normal Monday, whatever the case may be, this would look totally different for you, right? Some of us would fall in the exceptionally active range, right? Most of us would probably fall in the very active, okay? Maybe even moderately active, but that's gonna shift now, okay? Some of us, um, with, with where we are right now, we may be in the sedentary range, but you guys sitting in front of your computer for, you know, six plus hours a day um, and, 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 and having to do schoolwork and this, that, and the other with, with club sports being canceled and, you know, just not places for you to get out and just be as active as you normally would, right? We may be even the lightly active, moderately active, okay? I, I imagine we're probably in those ranges, very active to light active, right? So again, I kind of use myself um, as an example to kind of help walk us through that, right? So for me, right, I'm kind of sitting at the moderately active level, right? If we're in school, I'm probably down toward the very active, given the amount that I'm up moving around, coaching, uh, working out, um, and then even just after school stuff with, with middle school track practice, what have you, um, and then just doing stuff like that. So. I'm probably in a very active range um, when it's just normal, right? But right now, I'm probably mod moderately active, right? With just being here um, in front of the computer, answering emails, trying, trying to plan ahead and, and get things ready for you guys, um, and then just working out for maybe an hour a day, um, and, then being, and then like doing walks with my family at home, going out and walking, right? So I'm probably right there, moderately active, okay? So... So we've already figured out what my resting caloric expenditure is, right? So I got that down there. Now I want to take that percentage of my activity level, moderately active, okay? And if you notice, males, yours will be 45%. If you're in the moderately active and females, yours will be 40%, right? So I want to take my RCE, okay? Multiply that by that 0.45, okay, 45%, and that gives me 940, okay, 0.5, okay? So now I've, I've figured out what my daily caloric expenditure is based off my activity level, okay? How many calories am I expenditing in that, right? So I want to take, okay, my RCE now, okay? And I want to take my daily activity caloric um, numbers and I want to add those two together, right? So I've done that down at the bottom. So for me, I'll need about 3,000 calories, okay? 3,031 calories, right? And that's just so that I am not in a deficit. That's just like if I wanted to maintain and be at 190 pounds and, you know, not gain a pound, lose a pound, that's probably what I need to intake given my activity level on a day-to-day -day basis. If it stays the same on a day-to-day -day basis, that's probably what I need to take so that I'm not in a deficit where I'm, I'm under eating and I'm under consuming the calories that I need or and I'm not on the, on the upside of that, okay? It's going to look different for all of us based on one, um, your activity level, and then also based on your goals. Some of us may want to be um, on the side where we're putting on body mass, where we're putting on muscle mass, where we're, where we're looking to gain, while some of us may be on the other side, you know, where we're looking to lose fat mass, we're looking to, 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 to slim up a little bit. So it's going to look different depending on where you are, right? But I think it's important, especially right now, that we're able to get to this point and know, all right, this is how many calories I need to be consuming on a day-to-day -day basis to be able to just survive, to thrive, okay, whatever the case may be, right? So now that you, you're equipped, you're ready, right, you know what the cal caloric intake is for you um, and what it looks like, okay, I want to I talk to you about your schedule, right, your eating schedule. And what I've done is I've, I've put um, three common eating schedules that I know of um, student athletes typically follow, right? Um, so the first one is really, um, if you guys remember back to the first talk, I talked about optimal nutrition, right? And that's what we want to try to go after, right? And this first uh, eating routine, that's kind of what that is. That, that's optimal nutrition right there, meaning I'm eating every two to three hours, okay? Uh, I'm not skipping breakfast. I've got a snack in between breakfast and lunch. i got a snack between lunch and dinner. And, and maybe if I'm on the side where I, where I want to gain weight, I want to put on some muscle mass, maybe I have another snack after dinner leading into bed, right? 
So this is really, like, if you're really serious about athletic performance, you're really serious about, um, you know, finding an edge um, in anything that you can do, whether that's training, whether that's uh, recovery, whether that's your nutrition, this is probably the route you want to be. This is probably where you want to be, okay? Now, the second one, uh, three square meals, okay? Not a bad thing. I, I imagine most of high school students fall under this one right here, where they just get a breakfast, lunch, and a dinner, right? Not a bad thing, okay? And I imagine, like, right now, this is where a lot of us are right now, with just getting breakfast, lunch, and dinner, given um, our circumstances. I know for me, this is exactly where I am, just getting breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Like, on a typical school day, I'm up there at the eat, you know, every two to three hours just because I'm so active and I'm doing so much um, with, with coaching and this, that, and the other, right? So it's changed a little bit for me. And I imagine for most of you, it's changed as well. And, and you need to be aware of that. You need, to, you need to know, like, what's your normal eating schedule and what does it look like now, right? And then this last one, this one is, I'm not going to say it's a bad one, okay? It's not, you know, the worst thing in the world, but it's definitely something we want to try to improve on, right? Obviously, number one, breakfast is the most important meal, right? If I'm a serious athlete and I'm serious about my sport, I'm serious about improving, right? And I'm serious about training, all this stuff, okay? I cannot skip breakfast, okay? I cannot go into a training session already behind the curve, okay? Because I didn't have a breakfast. I don't have anything. And we'll talk about the importance of fueling, okay? We'll talk about that in the next coming slides, right? So, I know a lot of us are in that range too. Well, we, we don't really like to eat breakfast, okay? I really encourage you um, to either, one, get a breakfast, okay? Um, stick to that, or, okay, if you're already on breakfast, maybe you're skipping one of these other meals, I really encourage you to try to get a, the three square meals or even take it up another notch and go um, eating and try to eat every two to three hours, okay? I know that may be a tough ask for some of you, and it doesn't have to necessarily be a huge meal. Okay, I'll talk a little bit about that in a little bit. Okay. All right, so just looking at uh, some key nutrients, some things that are, are I, I would say, some things that are must-have in your diet, right? A couple things. Number one, probably the most important thing you want to have in your diet is protein, okay? Protein is, is really the foundation of it all. It's the building blocks for all tissues, for muscle, um, for bones, um, even brain, for your brain growth, right? Protein is what all those development things are built upon, right? Not only it, is it the building blocks, but it, it also, it's also a way to keep you healthy um, and also a way for you to build strength, right? Um, and then just the last little thing that I put there on protein, this is key for your age range right? A lot of you, probably 90% and 90, 95% of you are in this stage where your body is just constantly changing. It's constantly growing, right? And, and if we're not getting the right amount of protein, and if we're not even consuming protein, right, we, we are not reaching our full potential in terms of growth and in terms of development, right? So protein kind of helps us in all those areas. This is, in my opinion, the, the most important thing that we need to make sure we get right and i'm talking about lean protein I'll, I'll have a little diagram for you to kind of help you figure out what's a lean protein okay moving on carbohydrates right carbohydrates also important okay this is really the main source of fuel for your body okay when you think about training where your energy is coming from all that is coming from your carbs your, carbo your carbohydrates the things that you know that you've consumed those fuel your workout system those fuel you throughout the day, okay? Not only that, but it, it helps um, in just overall health in terms of like your gut health, okay? And then even cardiovascular health, it helps in that as well. So think of it as this way, like if, you're, if your body is the car, right? Um, you, need, you have to have fuel, you have to have gasoline to put in the car so the car can go, right? That's basically the same thing with carbohydrates in your body, right? So you have to have those carbs to be able to fuel your training session um, and, and then be able to just have energy and fuel you throughout the day. Um, sometimes it gets a bad rap just because, um, you know, people go on low carb diets and things like that. But carbs, there are some bad carbs and there's some good carbs. I'll talk about that a little bit more. Okay, fats, one of those, another one that kind of gets a bad rap, okay, but 
fats are, are very important. Um, and I'm talking about good fats, right? I'm talking about, you know, the, the good fats that you need to have in your diet, okay? Now, fats, it's important, okay? And this is also another source of energy, okay? Once you've depleted those glycogen stores, okay, and your body doesn't have those carbs to pull from, guess what it's pulling from now, okay? It's pulling from the fat stores that you have, right? So it, it's key that we have the proper, we were, that we're intaking the proper um, amounts of fats, okay, and the proper fats in our diet, okay? Not only that, um, but it also helps in just joint health, right, and just uh, helps in um, inflammation, right? If, 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 if I'm someone who's suffering from nicks and necks and just sprains and this, that, and the other, um, consuming the right kind of fats can aid in that, right? Um, and then lastly, um, it also helps with just, you know, making sure you're getting the proper amount of vitamins, okay? And I'm going to talk about another way, how we ensure to get the proper amount of vitamins without having to, you know, have a vitamin supplement. Not to say that's a bad thing, but um, not everybody can do that. But there's a way to, you know, get all those vitamins, uh, even just through, you know, having a solid nutrition, okay? All right, so this is the little chart that, um, you know, that I put for you guys to kind of help you navigate through some of these choices, right? We talk about protein, talking about lean proteins, some dairy proteins, and even some plant proteins on there. Um, and, it, and it's really a way for you to, to look at this chart and say, hmm, you know what? Um, I, I, that's usually in my diet. That's usually in my diet. That's not in my diet. I uh, probably want to try to implement that or add that into my diet. I'm not saying that these are things that you have to eat. There's also other things that can go on here. But these are some common um, foods that fall underneath these categories, right? So looking at carbohydrates, okay, there's, I've, I've split it up into two different forms of carbo carbohydrates, right? One is grains, and then the other one's fruits and veggies, right? So I'm talking about grains. I'm talking about like wheat pasta, wheat bread, brown rice, um, and even like whole grain cereal. I know some of you love cereal um, and, and can eat cereal all day long. Um, and, 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 and things like that, wheat tortillas that's on there. Um, and then looking at some veggies, okay? Um, now, you don't, I know we don't have the luxury, or you may not have the luxury of getting a, a veg or a fruit right after your training session like you would typically here in the NAIC, right? Um, and that's why we try to provide some of these things for you is because we know the importance behind fueling you guys with the right carbohydrates, okay? Um, so looking at just like apples, berries, bananas, like all these things that you're familiar with that you probably consume, um, peaches. And then when we start looking at some, some vegetables, right? Sweet potatoes, um, squash, carrots, broccoli, and, and things like that, right? Just, just simple stuff that I want you guys to start thinking about and be aware of when, you, when you're trying to put together um, this, this, this perfect diet. And I say perfect for lack of a better word. Um, and then just fats, right? Just really looking at some fats. Um, like peanut butter, almond butters. Um, you got your your olive oils, your avocado. I even put you know sal salmon can go down under protein as well, but just because of the, the fat content that's in it and the good fats that are in it, I kind of just left it over here on the fat side. But that that one you can kind of double dip on that one. But yeah, I really just put this chart here for you to kind of help navigate you. And the cool thing about it, I talked about it a little bit earlier, is that if I am making sure that I have each one of these fats, carbs, and proteins, okay, in all of my meals, guess what I'm also doing, okay? I'm also getting the vitamins and minerals that I need, okay, without having to necessarily use a supplement, okay? Just because I have a well-balanced diet, okay, and it's thought out and it's planned, okay, I can still get those vitamins that are essential for me, okay, without having to do that just simply through having a structured, planned diet, okay? So as times have changed, I really want you to think about that. Like really think about right now, man, what, what, what are my eating habits looking like? Okay, how have they changed from being in school and, you know, having to make sure I, I've fueled myself before a training session and getting the proper full fuel after a training session, right? What's the gap now? How do I, how do I connect the two and, 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 and have a solid diet being away from campus and being away from school, okay? Hey, so like I told you, uh, this last part here, this may help you a little bit in terms of just selecting um, your portion sizes. Not everyone 
carries around a, a scale in their pocket so they can just weigh um, the food that they're about to eat and know, oh, that's one serving. Nope, that's way over. That's two servings, right? So just a real quick way for you to be able to navigate, figure that out. Number one is protein. We, when we were looking at proteins, right? So like chicken, um, um, beef, um, things like that. It's really, it really goes by the palm of your hand, right? So the little picture I put down there, the palm of your hand will kind of give you a good indicator of, you know, the serving size, okay? So just one palm size um, of protein, that's about three ounces, okay? And then you got your carbohydrates, okay? One serving of car carbohydrates kind of looks like a, a, a cupped hand, okay? Okay? Um, and it's down there. That's actually two servings down there because they're, they're using two hands. So that's actually what two servings would look like. So two hands would be a, a full cup, right? Um, and then just fats, okay? Real simple, real easy, just like the size of your thumb, okay? That's real easy to kind of measure out fats, right? And I'm talking about your olive oils. Um, I'm talking about like your, your peanut butter, your almond butter, those type of things. And even like your not so good fats, like when we start thinking about like our ranch dressing, we start thinking about um, our um, Caesar salad dressing, right? We're, we're still talking about that thumb size. Okay, I know for me, I probably, whenever I eat a salad, I'm, I'm probably going about three, four thumb sizes of, of servings on my salad, okay? Um, and then last one is just kind of fruits and vegetables. It's kind of the same as those carbohydrates up there, which is um, one, that, one, that one's actually one fist, fist size, so about a cup, okay? So, and, and it kind of looks the same as your, your carbohydrates up there. So hopefully um, this is helpful for you and kind of helps you think about your nutrition. Um, as, like I said, as, as things have, have kind of shift for us, um, but the biggest thing is if, if you are someone who is interested in kind of diving a little more deeper into this, um, let me know. You can either reach out to me, you can reach out to uh, Coach Burnett, and we'll kind of point you in the, the right direction based off of, um, you know, your goals and, and things that you want to accomplish in your uh, nutrition, okay? So like I said, I'll try to keep this short. Um, there, there's a little um, assignment for you to complete. Um, on my GAC and it's really just I want I want to be able to see you put this into practice that's the biggest thing right so in the assignment I want you to be able to one take a picture of at least one of your meals where in that meal you represent all of these things you have protein in it you have some, some carbohydrates in it you have um, some fat in it and you and, and then even maybe some fruits and veg vegetables in it as well right and I provided you a, of a list of, you know, what those things look like depending on each category, right? So that's really your assignment is to, is to take a picture of one of your meals, okay, that entails all of these things in there, okay? And I think that if you're um, intentional, I think it'd be pretty easy for you to pull off, okay? All right, so that's the talk for um, uh, nutrition. So if you guys have any questions, reach out, point you guys in the right direction. Um, hopefully. Um, you guys are thriving in, in, in everything that you do outside of, you know, your nutrition as well. But, hey, best of luck to you. Um, hope you guys have a great spring break and look forward to seeing you all again. I don't know if that's going to be on the Zoom call or if that's actually going to be in person, okay? But, hey, you guys have a good break and look forward to seeing you again.